मोटरसाइकिल इज नॉट स्टार्टिंग सो टुडे वे राइडिंग थ्रू आगुम बे द घाट स्टीप कर्व रियली टेस्ट योर स्किल एज अ मोटरसाइकलिस्ट आई थिंक एनी बडी कैन राइड फास्ट एनी बडी कैन राइड फ्लैट आउट ऑन ओपन रोड एक्सेक्ट्रा बट टू टेस्ट योर स्किल्स एज अ मोटरसाइकलिस्ट थ्रॉटल कंट्रोल क्लच कंट्रोल गियर शिफ्टिंग टू मेक श्योर इन द राइट गियर एट द राइट टाइम द राइट स्पीड This is one continuous descent. Very narrow road. This is a little dangerous. The Imagine the brakes holding 450 kilos on a steep incline. Palle jack prat palle. Yes sir sir. Thank you. Thank you. Just finished lunch here at the property that we are staying in. It's called Kolavara Heritage. It's in a estate. There's coffee. There's Erika. I just serve a little bit of all the wines, so you can get to taste all of them. So these are made here by you. Um, yeah, my mother-in-law makes them. We just help her with it. Erika, and this is usually had uh, after meal with the same concept of having pan because it helps in digestion. That dosa and sagu is very good. Rock solid. Rock solid. <laughs> Thank you. This really helped yesterday. These are called rock straps. Yeah. Ganesh turned out to be a savior. <laughs> <laughs> My bags were shifting one direction to the other. Slept fine. Only thing is, I slept in the afternoon, and I'm not used to sleeping in the afternoon. So I was up at 5:30. Yeah. My sleep wasn't. It was fine. Breakfast done. The motorcycles are ready, packed, and we're ready to go. So today we're going to be riding to Gokarna. Vic, the place that we are riding to is that proper go go karna? Yeah, it's proper go karna. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Red Earth. Red Earth is the place. It's a beachside property. Huh. With a kind of a semi-private beach. Ah, okay. It's called as uh, Honey Beach. Honey Beach. Yeah. You've been there before? No. <laughs> so Vic is going to lead us to Red Earth at Honey Beach. Don't get any ideas. It's yeah, just yeah. the name. It's just the name. <laughs> So it's five hours of ride time, right? So five hours, two hours in the hills, another two to two hours on the coast, coastal road. And we're doing lunch somewhere along the way. Yes, uh, maybe Murdeshwar. Murdeshwar. Maybe near Gokarna somewhere. How how far is it from here to Kundapur? Two hours. Two hours. Yeah. So once we hit Kundapur, then we can figure yeah. out where to do lunch. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Let's go. Motorcycles yeah. are fired up. Time to get on the right. Time to get this GoPro on the helmet. मोटरसाइकिल इज नॉट स्टार्टिंग बैटरी इज फाइन मौसम गणेश इज गणेश इज दुकाड़ी एट सम ट्रबल स्टार्टिंग बट That's a sweet sound of music. Great, super. We're all set. Motorcycles can roll out now. Okay, see you. Bye. All right. The ride is underway. The engine needs to warm up a bit. It was quite cold overnight, and uh, so I think that's the estate where we stayed, Kolhapura Heritage, about 40 acres. So today is day two of our four-day ride. This goes to our Tirtha Hali, and uh, so this place is on the border of uh, Shimoga and Chikmagalur district. So it's in Shimoga, but 
Chikmagalur district is just a few minutes away. So today we are riding through Agumbe, the ghats and uh, we are going to descend eventually towards Kundapura and find our way to Gokarna where we are staying. The time is 9.30. So I think we are riding about 250 kilometers today, roughly thereabouts. Tomorrow when we return, one option is to return the same route, but I think Vic has a, another route in mind. I think that comes, that goes via Jove Falls, if I'm not mistaken. Breakfast was good, Malige Dose. I don't do breakfast ever, you know that. But, uh, you know, when you're on the motorcycle and you're going to be riding for about 5-6 hours, not good to do so on an empty stomach although there are times when I ride without eating anything but then those are short rides when I know I'm going to be getting back home soon but when you're on the road you don't know where you're going to be stopping at you know the ultimate destination the eventual destination yes but on the way we don't know what really comes our way so good to fuel up Really enjoying this ride. I think we needed this outing. We needed this motorcycle adventure. Because however much you may ride in and around the city, I think the joy of, uh, you know, exploring places like these is quite unmatched there is so much in our country so much that we can explore the great sight to watch all the motorcycles four motorcycles in front of me and two behind me in the rear view there and also because the roads are narrow so we are sticking quite close together on the open highway you tend to speed up and the distances increase between the riders but out here everybody is within visual distance of each other so this route is all about the twisties most Bale Hunur especially it's all about the twisties I think the last 50-60 kilometers that we rode to the estate 
were, were roads like these winding up winding down steep curves so it really tests your uh, skill as a motorcyclist I think anybody can ride uh, fast, anybody can ride flat out on open roads etc but to test your skills as a motorcyclist throttle control, clutch control, gear shifting to make sure you are in the right gear at the right time, the right speed that really calls for you, your skills as a motorcyclist and when you are riding machines like these, these are big machines 300, 400 kilos from 1200 cc to 1800 cc which is the fat boy so they geared, they designed for speed so managing these beasts on these twisties is quite challenging but also quite exhilarating at the same time you also perfect your technique of riding when you ride out in uh, on routes like this lot of cattle on the road you gotta be careful you gotta look out for cattle I think that's a Mallard Gitta if I'm not mistaken that's a local breed of cattle here which is quite short and that's why Gitta and Mallard is the region some trivia about cattle <laughs> Yesterday we were all moving uh, back and forth within the group We are all holding tight formation today So Griff is up front on the fat boy Followed by Dasetan on his GSA Joe on his GS Vic on his Enduro And then there is me on the fat boy And there is uh, Ganesh on his uh, 1200S and uh, bringing up the sweep is Sridhar on his tiger So I know there's a ghat that will come up, Agumbe ghat, somewhere up ahead Quite looking forward to uh, riding through Agumbe ghat That's a lovely house on the edge of the fields there Ereka palm, lot of Ereka in this area So the entire tree line here is Ereka Everywhere you go, left or right, it's Ereka We a bit of a rough patch here in Meghrava Halli Some road work happening This is a route that's entirely new to me, I've never done this route before So whilst I've done Charmadi going towards Mangalore and on that, that part many a times But this route from Belur towards uh, Bale Honnur and then to Tirthahalli and now through Agumbe towards Kundapura is, uh, is a first time and I must say the roads are very good for the most part on this stretch So Agumbe is 15 kilometers from here from Arekal which is where we are When you ride through these villages you realize this is actually India because most of India is uh, living in places like these we focus on the metros, the tier 2 cities and towns but the villages are where most of India is living Of course I'm sure it's mostly even more hinterland than this
We are on NH 169A. Easy pace. We're riding at barely 60 kilometers an hour, and I think that's going to be the pace even as we work our way through the guards. Probably drop a bit more. So although we began a little later than what we would have liked to, no one's in a hurry. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to arrive at a destination all stressed. You want to enjoy the ride. Absolutely beautiful that was. Absolutely gorgeous. And the best thing is there's no traffic in between us. We're all in one clear line, from the first rider to the seventh. We've arrived at Agumbe. The guards will begin now. Just entered the forest area. Langurs, yeah, many langurs. I think on the Charmadi side we see the monkeys, the I think they call them are they called the macaque monkeys, I'm not sure. But out here on the Argumbe side you see langurs. At least that's the family of langurs that I saw there. Just waiting for the heavy traffic to come up around the curve there. One continuous descent, very narrow roads. This is a little dangerous. The material that they have on the side, the jelly. So some of it gets on the road and you break, you can have a spill. But then they got to also fix the roads. <laughs> so you got to be careful. Just going in second and third gear. Just drop to second.
bit of a jam ahead because I think there's a road roller. Joe, go slightly ahead. That red alto doesn't need to be doing that overtaking on these rather steep and sharp hairpin bends actually basically from one traffic jam to another on the curves Also testing my brakes. Imagine the brakes holding 450 kilos of mass on a steep incline. when you're descending the ghats the skills are slightly different from when you're ascending the ghats so as you come into a curve you're of course downshifting and you are uh, using your brakes but I think when you're on an incline especially if it's steep you also need to call the front brake in and you use that a lot more as opposed to when you're ascending and as you come out of the curve you're not really opening throttle because you're going down a steep incline. So I think what you're doing typically is... So what you're doing typically is just uh, engaging the throttle rather gently. If there's a slope then you cut the throttle completely. And if there's... if it's level road then you open it very very little. Just so that you have some momentum, that's it. But I'm constantly downshifting, so I'm now on the second gear, probably go to third. Because when you're on steep inclines going down, brakes are good, but then if you can also utilize the utilize the engine to help you brake, it's very helpful. Gone into second, you can hear that. And my rear brake. Front brake I use only when I want to really slow down the momentum. If I think it's going fast and I may not be able to control it. Go to third. Drop to second. Also creating drag by constantly tapping on the brakes, the rear brakes. We're on the 14th happen bend.
we are at someshwara i think from here there is one road that goes towards udupi and another that goes towards kundapur just a regrouping just to make sure that everybody is here what you go straight for 5 km you can eat the mangalore bun ah uh, it's 10:30 already how much time will it add there's a place further up apparently that does the mangalore bun and uh, Joe was checking if we want to eat it, but that's a bit of a detour. It's getting warm. It's also the humidity. We'll go straight. Yeah, let's forget it. Avoid it. Oh, that's a 45-minute detour. Another time may have been okay, but not this time. Full, full luck. Eleven liters I filled, two hundred and nine kilometers, about nineteen odd kilometers to a liter. But then the routes were quite twisty, the ghats, etc. And I think that was most of the riding. So that's why I got an average of about nineteen this time. Now we've got a range of three hundred and ninety-four kilometers. So descending Agumbe was quite tricky. The ghat is quite steep. It's a short ghat distance wise, but that's why I guess it's also very steep and uh, it suddenly drops at the edges. So once or twice when we were uh, just negotiating that sharp turn, you reach out to find some support, but there's no support below you because the ground suddenly has dropped off so you got to be a little careful when you are on agumbe it is a relatively tougher ghat than uh, charmadi that's a consensus amongst all of us so now we are on the agumbe kundapur route uh, 52 55 kilometers to hit kundapur and uh, we need to plan lunch somewhere along the way Let's see. 